के माध्यम से भारत में अपने प्रिय जनों को हेलो हे गाइज एम आई ऑडियो कैन यू जस्ट कंफर्म मी इफ यू कैन हियर मी can you guys hear me hi ravi hi sohel thanks for confirming okay so let's without any delay let's get started and others may join okay so guys the reason for this tutorial is last time when i was taking the docker tutorial right um, many of the people told me later that uh, i was writing commands fast and people are not comfortable with uh, commands and i should cover something that covers you know those things from the beginning so what i thought is many of you may not have interacted with linux machines so let me go ahead and try to give you a introduction of linux and i will tell you what is the difference between linux windows and why it is important for you to learn linux and then i will show you some 30 40 important commands okay very important for you guys 30 40 commands i will show you remember these commands and uh, your life will be easy in in the world of linux which you will encounter today or tomorrow okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to explain you something for next 40 to 45 minutes pay attention and learn what whatever i'm explaining last 15 minutes i will take your questions okay so just go ahead and press the like button guys if you have not pressed yet so that when you press like the recommendation goes to the people okay so what what all we are going to learn today is i'm i'm assuming i'm covering things from the scratch but as i told you the the main agenda is giving you some 30 40 commands that will be very very useful for you okay uh, so first of all we are going to learn what and why of linux obviously as you as you see in all my videos right what and why of linux why you should learn linux and what is linux okay and then i am going to tell you how you can practice linux in your machine so basically what happens is you may not have the right configuration or right setting because most of you are in windows machine so how you can config linux okay and then the simple way i will tell you there are multiple ways but there are simple ways and then third part and most important part of the session is going to be important commands that you must remember because if you don't remember these commands tomorrow you may face some problems okay you may face some problems i am going to tell you with i am going to give you demo with simple examples okay so first of all what and why of linux what is linux so some of you who is not from a computer science background right i will give you a, a just high level understanding of what is an os basically or os stands for operating system okay so in i am from cs background so i know um in computer science engineering there is a subject called operating system okay but some of you who does not know what is an os os is basically a software that lets your hardware and other parts of the system talk okay so what is the job of os is it is a layer between your hardware and whatever you do in your computers for example when you go to a to a windows machine right suppose if i go to my uh, desktop and i right click and i say new folder okay i right click and say new folder and write right here aman okay so what i did just now i created a new folder aman okay so how i was able to do this is there is a operating system software sitting in my computer which tells to my hard drive that hey user wants to create a new folder now suppose i put a 5 gb 
um, you know, photos or 5 GB movies in this folder. So 5 GB space should be allocated to me, right? That responsibility is of the operating system software that between the user and the hardware, it communicates, it allocates space, it allocates the CPU, it allocates the how the things will happen, happen for the user, okay? So high level, that is your operating system. What we are learning today is Linux. Now, Linux is not a full-fledged operating system, guys. Rather, Linux is basically a kernel, okay? Linux is basically a kernel. What is the meaning of Linux kernel is? Kernel is something that is you can think of as a, as a kind of sub-process between your hardware and what the user is trying to do, okay? Linux will not give you everything that Windows gives. So the purpose of Windows and Linux are different. I will write here on one hand, I will write here Windows, okay? On other hand, I will write here Linux, okay? So Windows is made in such a way that it is user-friendly, okay? It is user-friendly. User-friendly means you just saw now how, how quickly and easily I was able to create a folder in my computer, right? And it is for, uh, you know, layman. So your, your uh, you know, uh, uncles or mom, dad, everybody is able to use computers using GUI, clicking things, right? So that way our parents are also able to use, which means it is simple to use, okay? It does not need any experience or any expertise to use. But why we are learning Linux is, Linux is server friendly, or you can say application friendly, or you can say it is highly secure. So I will write here, most important component of Linux is highly secure, okay? So in Windows, people can come and, you know, deploy some antivirus in your machine very, very easily. If you double click, it will happen. In Linux, sorry, virus I mean to say. In Linux, it's not easy to do, okay? Linux is a highly secure place to do any kind of activity which does not support your computer in a good way, okay? And other reason is Linux is very famous when it comes to deployment and production. So you will be amazed to know that nine out of 10 cloud service providers, okay? Nine out of 10 cloud service provider, cloud provider, they use Linux. So it is that secure that most of the deployment, most of the production things happens using Linux. And it is very highly likely that you will have to write Linux commands when you join an organization or if you're already working in data science, maybe you will, you will work with Linux or you will end up working with Linux kind of operating system, okay? That is high level about Linux. Now it's, it's a kind of operating system you can think and it is more secure and why we are learning Linux is Linux is used in most deployment scenarios, okay? Now, how to install Linux? There are three different ways. If you want to install Linux, three different ways. First way is you can have a dual operating system or this is called as dual booting in your machine. So dual booting or dual OS, okay? Dual booting, dual OS means as you can see, I have my Windows machine, okay? I have my Windows operating system. I can have additional operating system. I can allocate some resources to that, not some resources that will happen in VM, that will happen in part two, okay? option two, what I will do, I will just have two operating system in my machine. I can run one at a time, other at a time, okay? This is not a recommended way. It will need a lot of expertise for you. So I will not tell you to go ahead with this, okay? Other way is VMs. VMs is virtual machine. What is virtual machine is you take some hardware of your computer and you allocate a new system on top of that. This will also take some of your time, but this is worth giving time. The reason for that is once you have a Linux in your machine, you can install Hadoop on top of that. You can install many things on top of that and you can do some practice, okay? But for quick learning, this is also not recommended, okay? At this moment, I want to take a pause and uh, show you one video where I have shown a step-by-step -step process of, uh, you know, installing Linux, uh, installing VM. So go to YouTube and search for, this is an important uh, lesson for if you want to learn Haroop, big data kind of thing, okay? So go here and write unfold data science, okay? And say Ubuntu installation, Ubuntu installation. So you will find one video here, guys. This is one, one video, install Linux VM on Windows. So on your Windows machine, you can install step-by-step -step processes here, 
okay very simple to do you can do if you are interested in learning haru big data kind of thing okay but for quick learning what i will tell you is in last video also i was telling in sunday wsl what is wsl is windows subsystem for linux in windows machine you no need to do anything you just need to install a software wsl and that will give you a linux interface in windows okay so this is what we are going to learn today i mean i have already installed but it is pretty simple installation you can go to google and say wsl installation for windows and it will be pretty fast thing to do okay so once we have wsl let's say you go to google and you search for where is my where is my other window because if i have searched something it will show uh wsl or windows wsl or windows windows subsystem for linux you can install and you can have a subsystem in your windows machine very simply okay so how windows subsystem for linux will look like is this is my windows machine okay in my windows machine a new folder linux will get created can you see this folder a new folder linux will get created okay in this linux folder you can treat this as a as a linux operating system folder just that it is not a separate os it is sitting in your windows machine only okay and then we have a folder called ubuntu in this ubuntu folder we have multiple subfolders in these folders we can work okay and it will give you a command line command line is very important for ubuntu or linux this is the command line okay for wsl what this is doing is it is interacting with that particular folder which i show you in gui now okay so you see here this folder right this folder and this folder is same if i go to home aman okay home aman then these two folders will be having same kind of uh let, let me go here home let me go here aman so if you see there is aman folder then aman docker th folder aman wsl demo folder so you will see these folders here also aman docker th aman wsl demo so which means this gui and this command line are both same okay now i will move to the most important part of the session that is commands knowing important commands okay why knowing important commands is very very critical here is as i said you if you don't know these 30 40 commands your life is going to be difficult if you are interacting with linux machines okay first of all guys when i open command right then first thing that i should do normally if you are allowed to do now if you know in windows there is something known as administrator or administrative user okay in linux there is something known as su su stands for super user okay super user okay so any command that you run with su in beginning that means you are running with super user okay you should have the privilege to run the command as a super user but in your machine obviously you will have the privilege so nothing to worry on that so first command i will run here is sudo apt update okay what this will do is it will ask me my password so when when i i was installing wsl i had a password so what it will do is it will install all the security upgrades everything so if you are installing first time you should do sudo apt update okay remember i ran this command using super user if you are not a super user you will not be able to run this command okay so i updated my machine now i have divided the command in three sections first i will cover the basic commands then i will cover some mid level commands then the advanced level commands okay so let me quickly go here and try to cover some basic commands okay first of all guys let me write who am i who am i means who is the one who is using this computer so <clears throat> aman is using or aman is logged in okay then some basic commands if you write who who is not not giving here but in some of the ubuntu distributions who is also a valid command okay and here i will say date date it will give me like this okay and then i am going to show you some basic commands for example pwd pwd stands for present working directory okay present working directory means in which directory i am currently working in so as i showed you in windows for example this is my gui so i am inside home aman forget before ubuntu after ubuntu this home aman right 
so i'm inside home aman that is pwd pwd means current working directory okay now i will write here a command called ls ls means list all the files in this directory so it will show you an output like this okay all the files in this directory is this but this is not a very very uh, user friendly kind of output so i will just say ls minus lrt so what ls minus lrt will give you is lot of information okay now let me walk you through what are the important information here first of all guys if you see the first component here right you will see that in some of these there is a d written in some of these there is a space blank space that dash kind of thing right you see here some of these there is a there is a d some of these there is a just a line so wherever there is a d that means that's a folder okay that's a folder that's not a file and wherever you see a space kind of thing that's a file okay now the thing you see here read write execute i will cover this in detail in the last section because this is very very crucial for you to know what it is and how to change the permissions okay here it will show you some details about who is the owner who is the group what is the size what is the date okay and here name of your folder so aman is one folder test is another folder small aman is another folder like that if i want to clear the screen from here i will just say control l and screen will be cleared fine so we saw how to list the file how to list the um, folders and how to view basic details about that now in ls minus lrt it will not list the hidden file suppose there are some hidden files in your computer okay so how you will do is ls minus lart so what it will do is it will list you all the hidden files also so for example git file is there ipython file is there some files are there okay so these things it will also different variants of ls i am trying to show you here just to see what is there what is not there fine now which directory i am in i am in this directory suppose i want to go to home one directory back so i will say cd space double dot and then i will say pwd i will go to home okay so previously i was in home aman if i do cd space double dot i will go to home which means one directory back suppose i want to go again to aman so i will say cd aman okay suppose inside cd aman i have many folders here ls minus lrt suppose i want to go inside demo 1 so i will say cd demo 1 okay these are the files inside demo 1 so if you write first letter then it will and press tab it will show you suggestion also for example i am going back and i am writing cd capital d tab so if there is only one matching that pattern it will show you that that name also okay so now i am inside this so what i am going to do is guys i am going to create a folder but not through gui suppose i want to just now i showed you in desktop how to create a windows folder right in linux we create a folder using command called mkdir okay so mkdir means make directory make directory i will say test 18 dec december okay so what has happened is a new directory has got created okay you want to see in gui i am expecting a new directory here with whatever name we give okay let's refresh this and let's modify let's sort short by this am i inside some other directory what is my pwd home aman only inside home aman it should be there see test 18 directory test 18 december right a new directory got created okay now suppose let's go inside this directory and i want to create a new file inside this directory so what i'm going to say is touch touch okay demo dot txt touch demo dot txt so what will happen is a new file will get created inside this directory so you can see demo dot txt if you go to here you will see demo dot txt okay but this demo dot txt is currently empty let's try to write something in this file okay so just to see the content of the file you can use another command called as called as cat 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 demo dot txt so nothing is there so nothing is printing now important and crucial part guys 
how we can write something in that file okay how we can write into that so there is different kind of editors in linux machine one famous editor is called vi okay vi and i will say vi and demo.txt and i will say enter if you say enter it comes inside the file and now i can write content in this file okay so but before that you need to press insert what you should do insert in your computer once you press insert then i can write something here for example hello this is commands demo to learn okay and then once i once i'm done writing i will say escape press escape and then say colon and then say wq wq stands for write and quit okay now if you remember previously when i did cat nothing was showing up but now in cat whatever i wrote there it is coming up okay so what i did i modified that file fine so how these things are useful is normally you don't modify files in linux machine like this but suppose there is a python file you want to change some small thing and you know do little modifications so these things are very very useful there is a configuration file you want to change the which server you want to deploy things like those i will show you one more time how to edit a command how to edit a file vi your file name enter press insert to go to insert mode okay and here you can add another line hi this is another line then escape in your computer then colon wq okay so if you do demo.txt you will see the another line as well and colon wq is for write and quit and if you just say colon q that is just quit it will not write it okay so remember vi editor is pretty important guys fine now suppose suppose in this file i want to search some pattern okay i want to search some pattern so command is grep and then i want to search pattern like something which is let's say linux linux i want to search where i want to search i want to search in demo.txt so linux i searched in this file and what i'm getting as output is hello this is linux and if you see linux is in red so the pattern which i searched is coming in red here okay so this way suppose you have a file and you want to search some keywords for example let's say where the where the server address is stored or where a particular variable is stored so this way you can say grep that variable name and search in the file quickly in the linux system fine this is how you can search now let's move to part 2 of the commands these were the basic commands let's move to part 2 of the commands so first thing i want to show you here is disk df okay what it will show you is in your computer um, in which of the places how much of space is consumed and how much of space is uh, there available okay so in different uh, different uh, drives right how much of space is available how much of space is used per in percentage wise this is pretty important to know because if i want to do this then only i'll be able to know where to store my files where to store my uh, if i have to store some data etc okay another command is du du is like what is the what is the uh, disk usage etc or how many how many different kinds of disks i have there is a slight difference between these two you can just google once okay i am i am not able to recollect now but df and du both are for uh, seeing things related to your disk or space allocation okay some of the commands that you can run using administrator if you are a sudo user every time you will not be a sudo user is reboot that will reboot your computer power off that will power off your computer okay and some of the commands that you can use is for example let me go one step back and whatever file i created whatever folder i created test 18 dec suppose i want to zip this folder so in windows how do you zip this folder suppose i want to zip this folder i will go and say compress right right click and compress to zip file so it is empty so it is not happening now but right click is what you do in windows here there are different tools through which you will uh, zip your file okay so let's say i am not sure if ggp is available in this or not otherwise we have to install it ggp and your file name okay so ggp is a directory it's ignored uh, so another thing is you can watch some help here 
like this so it will give you what all come what all parameters your command is expecting okay this is pretty important so now my ggip command threw some error right so i can come here and see what what mistakes i'm doing okay so since i have made the size large so that you guys can see it i'm not able to go up let me try to what is right and standard output f health k what i want to do is i want to compress one file so maybe directory it's not taking let me go inside file and try to give it okay cd gzip gzip demo dot txt why it is okay it's capital so let me try and let me do ll so as you can see there is a uh, zip folder created so zip folder here is created for that file for which i'm able to i'm trying to create now using this tool you can unzip this as well okay so some of the important commands that you should remember suppose you receive a zipped file in linux machine how will you unzip it or suppose you want to pass a file to someone how you will pass it to someone right so that way now suppose uh, let, let me go out here and let me do a ll again to see my directories and let me go inside uh, any of the file okay so docker today for example docker today and i will say l i will say ll okay suppose this docker file is here and i want to copy this docker file load to a different directory to a different directory let's say test 18 directory only i want to copy it so how to do that is cp this docker file you will give the complete path since now i am inside this directory so i am giving the file name that is fine but if not i have to give the complete path okay and then i will give the complete path for where i want to copy so home aman test 18 december so i want to copy this docker file to the new folder that i have created now done now let's go back to the test 18 and see if that is done so you can see a new docker file is got got copied now suppose i want to copy everything that is inside docker today folder to test 18 december everything that is inside docker today folder to test 18 december what i am going to do i am going to come back to the root and i am going to say cpr okay it may be small r or capital r not sure if it throws error we will see okay cp minus r and then which file from you want to copy so i will say docker today and where i want to copy i will say test this so what i am saying to machine is everything that is in docker today copy everything to test 18 dcr r means recursive okay run this and let's go to this and see if everything is copied yeah everything is copied right from directory itself so i will go here and you will see all the files are here so cp minus r is for recursive copying recursive means everything including your directory as well okay so some of these commands you should know now suppose i want to install anything here so what you can do is sudo apt install sudo apt install in your machine you want to install any software okay so whatever software you want to install for example notepad i'm not sure if this is a valid thing unable to locate package it may, may not be a valid package for window but uh, for this machine but sudo apt install and your package name whatever you want to install okay software you want to install similarly if you want to remove or update you can just say here update okay or you can just say here remove so you remember how in windows you update or remove a software you go to uh, you go to your administrative uh, access and then say uninstall this software so here you can use sudo as i told you sudo or su is for root user and then remove or uh, upgrade whatever you want to do okay so the, this is one part of it now i'm going to cover the third part and very important part next 15 minutes guys because this is where you may face a lot of issues in terms of permissions so as i told you windows and linux machine the basic difference is linux is focuses more on security windows focuses more on uh, users ease of working okay so security is pretty important here and that is where all the files all the folders are protected in linux machines okay so what is what i mean by protected let me go to the root directory again 
and let me do a ls minus lrt okay if i do a ls minus lrt then there is a folder called test 18 dec you see here test 18 dec ls minus l a r t test 18 dec in this test 18 dec you see these permissions now i am going to explain you were made very important concept that you have to remember let me go to my notepad here and i will write something here okay so before every file or folder you will see something like this guys pay attention here it's pretty important before every file or folder you will see something like this and you have to remember one thing here read okay write okay and execute read write and execute there are three levels of permission reading means whether a user can read that file or cannot read that file write means whether a user can write in that file or cannot write in that file and execute means whether a user can execute or cannot execute that file when i say file applies to files folders all okay read in the world of linux is represented as four number four remember this number number four write is number two and execute is number one okay why these numbers are important is every time you see a uh, you will see something like this let me write here if it's a directory you will see d then three things okay after that you will see three things and after that you will th see three more things okay let me bring it below or here so in terms of permission you will see if it's a directory you will see d like you are seeing here if it's a file you will not see this d but you will still see these things so you will see a set of three three things here this is one set okay this is another set and this is another set okay now you will see here either r or w or x the meaning of that is read write and execute so here you are able to see read write execute read space execute read space execute so write permission is not there so what you have to remember is first three permissions is for user okay second three permissions is for group okay and the last three permission is for others this linux concept is pretty important and it will it can eat your whole day if you don't understand these things good way okay hence i am covering this very very detailed in linux machine before every file or folder you will see something like this okay the meaning of that is you will see if it's a directory d otherwise a space and nine entries nine entries means you will see something like this so understand the meaning of this first three entries tells you whether user has a read write and execute permission or no come here first three entries user has a read write execute permission okay whether group group means if there is another user who belongs to the same group does he or she has read write per execute or not now you can see read and execute is there but write is not there for people who are in same group write cannot happen read and execute can happen write cannot happen and third is for others same way whatever you see there whether it can happen or it cannot happen read write and execute okay i'll i'll just open the floor for q and a in some time just hold on to your question let me explain this one thing first okay so what is this this is for user permission this is for group permission group means if suppose aman and one more person is working on the same machine both of us are part of one group so what what we do in projects is we create one group and we say that both these users belong to this project so anybody in that group will have this permission that i have highlighted and anybody in this world who is logged into that machine they will have another kind of permission okay that is shown by last three numbers now suppose i want to modify this so in this file in this suppose folder python docker for others there is right permission also i want to give to group users and i want to give to others also suppose i want to do that in python docker okay in this folder so what i can do is i can change the permission because i am a root user or i am the creator of this 
So how to change the permission? You have to come here and say CHMOD, CHMOD. And now I will enter some numbers here, okay? For now, I am saying 777. Now, what is the meaning of 777 is? If you want to give read plus write plus execute all permissions, then you will say 777, okay? First seven is for user, second seven is for group, third seven is for others, fine? Suppose I want to give write permission and execute permission, then I will say three and same with different combinations, okay? So here, suppose I say ch mode and I will say minus r because that's a directory, okay? R means recursive and where I want to change, suppose Python Docker, Python Docker and I run this command, changing permissions of this operation not permitted. It is not allowing me to do that. Maybe I need to be a super user to do that. Let me try using sudo, okay? So same command using a super user. Now it allowed me. So you saw the level of protection Linux is giving, right? It is not allowing me to do until or unless I'm a super user. Now, if I do ls minus lart, you will see in Python Docker, the permissions are changed read write execute for user that was before also for people in the group also give read write execute for others also read write execute this is the highest level of permission very dangerous don't do in production machines okay i just showed you for demo what can happen is suppose all your code files and all your configurations are kept inside this folder so anybody can come and edit that and also write that and also execute that so you want to be very careful on what is this number that you are providing when you are giving read write execute permissions so as i told you if you want to give read and write only but not execute one of the, these sevens you will make a six so let's try that let's take any file for example this demo one okay this demo one and suppose i will make six six in place of seven so what is the permission right now read blank execute and read blank execute okay so it is already read and execute which means four plus one five is already there so suppose i want to make it writable to just group so i will say seven six and uh, i want to let's say pull some permission also i will say one okay so what happens now you will see in demo one permissions are changed okay or it is like before only demo one only okay okay i think i did not change the folder name let me go here demo one and let me see permissions are changed so you see permissions are revoked now previously the user was able to read and uh, read at least but since i made that one so that permission is gone okay and i have given read and write execute permission is gone so based on what number you give out of the 777 your permissions will be decided okay remember this concept if you are not understanding you can go back to video but i will summarize real quick in one minute before every folder in linux you will see something like this that means what is the permission for user group and others others means anyone okay if you want to change the permission then you have to write a command called chmod which is for changing permissions and whatever number you give after chmod just remember read write execute is 421 and from this combination we make 777 and then we change the permission this is a security protocol in linux okay otherwise anybody can come and edit your file which is not a healthy practice fine and some of the other things also if you have pseudo privileges then only you can do like the way I wrote chmod, you can say chgrp for changing group. Suppose I want to change group of that file. So what is the meaning of group is if I if I do ls minus lart. So you are seeing aman and aman. So user and group are both same here. So normally you will see user is something else and group is something else normally in production scenarios. So suppose I want to change group and I am privileged to do that. Then chgrb, I want to change the honor. Then chown. OWN standing for honor, okay? And one important command is CHMOD that is that I already explained you in detail. So just to recap what all we covered before we go to Q&A, I explained you what is Linux and why it is important for you to learn Linux. And if you don't know the basic commands, 
it may be difficult for you okay then i told you three different ways of configuring linux either you can have a dual operating system or you can have a virtual machine or you can have a wsl for learning purpose whichever you prefer you can do that and most important i i covered 30 40 commands here which are very crucial for you to know and i want you to be comfortable with writing linux commands because um if you are uncomfortable, then many things you may not be able to do. Now, whatever files I created, guys, I can access from VS Code as well. Okay, Visual Studio Code as well. So I will go to Visual Studio Code and I will just say here, Control Shift P, okay? Control Shift P means new WSL window, it will open. In this new WSL window, I will go and select that. Okay, so whichever I, I created now. So open file, sorry, open folder, I should say open folder. Okay, in this open folder, you will go here and where is my file folder that I created today? Hmm. Why it is not listing anyway, let's go to demo one. So demo one, I can open here like this. So in demo one, whatever I can create, I can create. So aman.txt is here. And if I write anything, hi aman here and I save then inside demo one that will be saved. That's not a matter of worry. CD demo one cat aman.txt. Hi aman here. Okay, so whatever I wrote here that is here. So there is there is no, no need of worrying that, you know, always you have to write the commands in black screen. It will not happen, but you should be prepared to do little editing, little addition, these kind of things and write these 30, 40 basic commands that I told you now, okay? So let's go ahead and you can ask your questions, guys. I have some questions. Let me read that. I didn't go get call from HR. May I, may I know the reason behind it? So any questions related to technical, whatever we explained today, I can take that first. How can we back to terminal from folder? So here what is happening is we, ha we have installed a software called WSL. Okay, and WSL is a interface on top of your Windows machine that gives you a Linux kind of environment too, for learning purpose or doing some small task. So in my in, in my drive, you will see a folder like this. WSL.localhost Ubuntu home aman, whatever I created. And the same thing I can create from here. Okay. So you can ask any questions if you have guys. I can explain you. This this part is important. Okay, remember read write execute numbers and how the permissions work. Every time you get an error saying you don't have permission to view this file or you don't have permission to run this file, you should refer to this this page that I'm showing you now. Any other questions, guys? Before we wrap up. So what you have to practice from here is you can practice most important things you can practice is VI, VI editor, okay? Because one important thing you should learn is how to edit files in Linux. So VI editor, try to learn and then try to learn whatever I explained in CH mode and CH on or those kind of things, okay? And basic copying, moving and, you know, deleting and all these things. So deleting also, if I have not covered, let me cover it quickly, deleting the files, right? So it will be pretty simple. Suppose I have created a file here for demo purpose today, right? Uh, this file test 18 December. Suppose I want to rename this file to a new file. So I will say MV test and whatever name I want to give. Okay, so let's say new name, new name. So now if I do, I will see a new name. The file name is changed, okay? You see, you will see a new name. Suppose I want to delete this file entirely. So if it's a folder, you will say RM. If it's a file, you will say RM hyphen R because you want to do the cascading. You want to do the recursive delete. So I will do like this. And then whatever I created is gone. You will not see that folder now. Okay. So I missed uh, RM and RM minus R. So I covered that as well. 
did you guys like this session? Was this session useful from Linux point of view? You can just give me some feedback so that I can plan the similar session next week as well. Not Linux, some other session, which is, as I told you, right? So my intention here is to take only the topics which are pain points of the students, where students feel a little uncomfortable. And you know, when you are learning something and when you're trying to write commands, you will feel a little uncomfortable. But if you if you spend some time, right, then it will be good for you. So, sell what 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 are the topics I should plan my sessions on? Can you give me some ideas on what topics is in your mind? I will see here your suggestions and then I can decide. So I have some things in mind, but if you give me some suggestions, that's that's also better. Thanks, Sohil and Ravi Teja, Dhananjay, everybody. How can we find a bug from software using Linux commands? Not sure. What is your question here, Tahir? Bug means what bug? Pavan is asking where www HTML problem. Please solve. Please explain. Okay, I want to. Uh, what is where www HTML problem? I mean, in what context, Pawan? If you can give me some context, I can give you answer maybe. <clears throat> I'm still not getting your question, Tahir. How can we find a bug from software using Linux commands? Akash is asking about big data. So uh, just to let you all know, if you, you want to work in big data kind of environment, then whatever I taught you today, nothing is more important than that. that okay? Because of uh, if you if you don't know the basic Linux commands, it, it is going to be difficult for you to work with Hadoop and big data. Okay. And at this point, I want to give you one reference, guys. Pretty important for you if you are seriously learning, wanting to learn Hadoop and big data. Okay. Go to unfold data science and search for unix playlist okay unix playlist what will happen is you will find a playlist big data unix and hadoop playlist like this fine there are 14 videos here which is enough for you to get started with big data as you know nowadays people are people are preferring full-fledged data scientist and to end data scientist and if you have knowledge on big data hadoop spark these kind of things, your resumes will be preferred over other people's resume. Okay, so you can go here and learn about big data Unix and playlist, uh, big data Unix and Hadoop. I have covered everything right from installation to how you can do the practice, how you can do the things in your virtual machine. And people have, you know, a lot of good comments on this playlist on these on this video. As you can see, Hadoop components, installing Ubuntu BM, and then Linux commands, then Hadoop installation, Hive installation. Okay, scoop I have covered, MySQL I have covered, many things here. You can you can just see this. If you are wanting to learn big data, Hadoop, so that your you know somebody asks you in interview those questions, you are able to answer. Okay. So that's all, guys. I hope you like this session. And I have some topics in mind, as I told you, uh, all the Sunday sessions will be on the topics where people feel uncomfortable. Next Sunday also, I will announce it soon. And there will be one more hands-off and technical session, not the, not the non-technical sessions. Technical sessions, hands-on sessions, I will plan next Sunday, same time, mostly. And I will let you know. Is Spark more preferable than Hadoop nowadays? See, both of these are interrelated, Spark and Hadoop. Okay, and Spark is faster. So people are obviously preferring Spark as a, as a skill and as a tool as well. Okay, so it's not that you will learn Spark and you don't know ABC of Haroop. Okay, both will come together in my opinion. Because the engine it will use in background are mostly kind of fall in sync with each other. Thanks everyone for joining. Okay. See you all next live session Sunday with some another interesting topic. 
bye everyone take care have a nice rest of the sunday